In the northwest alone, there are 89,000 people that live with dementia. And we were allowed a glimpse into the lives of just two. My name is Joan. I'm 53 years old. I've been diagnosed with dementia two years ago. I find out if I'm having more uh, bad days than good days now. Uh, sometimes you can go out and you can think as though you feel as though you can do things, and then when you're outside, actually outside, and you can't do things, it's just like going like simple shopping on your own and talk to people who you used to know, but it's getting to the stage where I'm forgetting people's names now, and I'm just finding it harder now. I feel as though, because I can't do old mate family like I could be able to do before, it just makes you feel as though is it worth it uh, going on. Because you never think that do, do you get dementia. I mean, people in your family get it, but you don't think you get yourself early age. And it's just very, when I saw it on penny paper when doctor actually saw me, it was just like a dream. So if you talk to talk about somebody else having dementia. And it's just really for anybody who gets it, it's not a fair on life. Meet Anne and Roger. They had been married for over 20 years and Roger was diagnosed with Alzheimer's when he was 60 years of age. She's, she's perfect. Oh, thank you. Right, we'll get, get a cup of tea. Film. I was going to say, get that on film. Flipping <laughs> <laughs> <Like> heck. <laughs> I'm a full-time carer now for my husband, Roger, who was diagnosed with Alzheimer's six years ago when he was 60. When he was first diagnosed, uh, the overall feeling is being very alone, that you're out there in this world and you've got, you feel like you have no help whatsoever. Roger now needs quite a lot of help with getting dressed, getting washed. So I normally... Those are nice brown ones. Those are nice brown ones, you like those. Yeah. He still likes being very nicely dressed, don't you? Yes. Yeah, so I normally have to do the colour coordinating mm -hmm. of different clothes in the morning. Mm -hmm. If I turn my back for a moment, he tends to then be putting pyjamas back on again. But overall, it was the change to our lives that I just felt was just so different. We had plans, we have a house in Spain, and we were going to eventually retire there and live there. And now everything's very, very different. When we use the word dementia, obviously it conjures up words, usually negative words, so if we ask people what do they think dementia means, it's usually memory loss, sometimes you hear phrases like the person disappears and we need to just pause and stop and think well actually what does the word mean? So if we think about it just as a word that describes a set of symptoms and there are then many different conditions which dementia is a part of, but we would always say yes those words that descri describe the symptoms are often negative but the person doesn't disappear. It might just take a little bit of time, a little bit of patience, trying some different communication strategies to support somebody with dementia, so that their character, their personality, their life history, their thoughts, wishes, dreams, hopes, ambitions, aspirations, can all be communicated and they can be supported to, to live well throughout the progress of their dementia. My name is Mark Aldred. A number of years ago now, my father was diagnosed with dementia. I remember going and speaking to my mum about it. My mum saying to us that uh, you've got your own family, I'll look after your dad. And I turned around to my mum and said, but we're your family. You know, we're in this together. We'll look after my dad together. So we went to the day centre, um, to the bingo night as it was. And for my mum to walk in that room, and realised that everybody else was going through exactly the same as what my mum was going through, you saw the weight lift off her shoulders. It was at that point then we decided to look at um, setting up dementia cafes in the borough of Wigan. Um, I put my name forward to be Mayor 
of, of Wigan Council. I got that. And during our year, my wife and I, as Mayor and Mayoress, with some amazing people in the borough, raised about £36,000 to set up dementia cafes. Two years ago, we decided that funding was running out. We wanted to set up the Good Deeds Trust just to, to keep them funded. So I'm not lifting my hands higher than my shoulders. If you lift your hands above your heart, then the, the heart rate goes a little bit higher. We're just gonna take it nice and easy this morning for you. Not only do the coffee mornings act as a meeting point, they also provide stimulating mental and physical activities which over time has become a highlight to Joan's week. Yeah, first time I've seen people do that Chachi and we've tried to do it and I find it very relaxing afterwards I felt as though I was very relaxed. I wish it could be more than once a month because I'd rather go to Everton than go to Baltimore because it's like going to a local family. I think they do so much for people there. Um, when we joined the Dementia Buddy, and went up to their coffee morning for the very first time. It was so totally different. Um, the atmosphere was very different. I think it's because it's a mixture of people with Alzheimer's and dementia, but also to people that haven't. And I think you still need that mix so that the person doesn't feel that they've just been put with, you know, other sufferers. It's changed his life, but it's changed my life. My life is so different. I was, I was just so depressed and down because I felt there was nothing for me as the carer either. And having the people there and to mix with them has just changed my life completely. latest technology out there, a new thing that had just come out was NFC technology. And this is a small microchip um, that fits in the device that allows us to use modern mobile phones to identify the person. You put your main screen on, then as soon as you touch the back of the phone onto the device, then it instantly comes up with the details, the first name of the, the person with dementia and the telephone number of the loved one. It's a big relief knowing I can go outside with my son Manchester like I used to and I know if I get lost the police will be able to identify and then they'll be able to contact my husband or my son. Although dementia has changed our lives in some ways, in other ways we do try to carry on as normal as possible and by keeping as active as possible as well. And when weather permitting, we go for lots of walks, we work in the garden and also now from last week we started dementia swimming. Um, which is a really good exercise for Roger because um, since he's lost his weight as the legs part are okay with walking but his top half of the body needs strengthening so the swimming will be a really good one for him. Roger was very very reluctant to go swimming and he was actually to the point of saying I don't want to go swimming all the way up to going in but when he came out I think he felt really proud of the achievement that he'd actually swam and actually did feel a lot better about himself. I think he was quite pleased that he'd done that exercise and it just gave you a sense of achievement. Community projects such as the Dementia Cafes are small steps to making a big change within the lives of those with dementia. Until there's a cure, National charities and these local communities are on the front line, improving the quality of life for sufferers and their carers.